So you want to know, are all prostate cancers real? Well, in this video, you're going to learn all about prostate cancer and which ones are real and which ones are not real. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health, so you can be informed and in total control of your medical needs. If this is your first time on the channel and you like to get fact-based healthcare information, please hit the subscribe button for me. By the way, Health Drum is for educational and informational purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting fact from fiction. So let's see what the broad categories of prostate cancer are. So basically there are three broad categories of prostate cancer. The majority with very sluggish growth rates, the 10 to 15% high grade potentially deadly prostate cancers, and then the Gleason 6 disease. Now, because most prostate cancers are outlived, using the terms prostate cancer and early stage prostate cancer are meaningless unless they refer only to the 10 to 15% potentially deadly high grade prostate cancers. This fact makes a mockery of prostate cancer awareness and the many claims about the importance of prostate cancer screening. So let's take a good hard look at this Gleason 6 disease. So the Gleason 6 was labeled as a cancer purely on the basis of its low power microscopic appearances. Typically it appeared as well differentiated or well formed looking very similar, if not the same as a normal prostate cell. And because the cell had features very similar to the normal cell, it was very difficult to say conclusively that it was a cancer. So why did the urology community continue to call the Gleason 6 disease a cancer? So there were several claims made by the urology community as to why the cancer label should remain for the Gleason 6. That the cells have prominent nuclei, that there may be loss of basal cells, that there may be some minor biochemical features, and that they may exhibit perineural invasion, and so on and so on. However, what the urology community neglected to tell you is that all of these features can also be found in benign cells and that none of these features on their own or together mean that the Gleason 6 is a cancer. So what really determines whether a cell can behave as a cancer or not? So whether a cell can behave as a cancer or not is due to the biological pathways for cancer development and for cancer spread. This determines whether a cell can behave as a cancer or not. Now, when the biological pathways for cancer development and for cancer spread in the grade 3 cell within the Gleason 6 disease were examined, both molecular pathways were inactive. Therefore, because the biological pathways for cancer development and for cancer spread in the Gleason 6 were inactive, the Gleason 6 is a fake or bogus cancer. So what are the consequences of this failure by physicians in the American regulatory apparatus to address the mischaracterization of the Gleason 6 as a cancer? So there are a number of consequences of this failure to drop the cancer label from the Gleason 6 disease. Patient shock and emotional distress, exposure to exaggerations, half-truths and misinformation, over-testing, over-diagnosis, and over-treatment, as well as physical harm and financial burdens. Remember, most prostate cancers are outlived. So now we know that the Gleason 6 is not a real cancer. Is there something else about prostatic diseases and cancers that we should know about? So the reason why periodic monitoring or active surveillance is recommended in those diagnosed with the Gleason 6 is because most prostate diseases and cancers are multifocal, meaning that there are usually two or more independent lesions in 80 to 90% of cases. 
And the reason for multifocal disease is thought to be due to the phenomenon of field effects or field cancerization, a condition where the prostate tissue has been triggered by some unknown agent to become cancerous of unknown grade at some point in the future. So how is this periodic monitoring or active surveillance for prostate diseases undertaken? So active surveillance using one or more of the tests listed is commonly recommended. The prostate exam or digital rectal exam is recommended every six to 12 months. The PSA is recommended every six to 12 months, as well as a prostate biopsy every two to five years and MRI imaging every one to five years. So the whole goal of this monitoring or active surveillance is not for any possible upgrading of the Gleason 6 disease, as there's no scientific evidence that the grade three within the Gleason 6 can upgrade. But active surveillance is about trying to detect new and higher grade disease or cancers that may develop at some point in the future in another part of the prostate. So these various monitoring steps for active surveillance are recommended, but what is the evidence that these various steps or active surveillance actually save significant numbers of lives? So both the prostate exam and the PSA test are highly unreliable. As well, the ultrasound guided 12 core prostate needle biopsy normally samples blindly and randomly about 0.1% of the prostate and is also highly unreliable as well as being risky. And although MRI imaging is much more reliable for screening and for detecting high risk prostate cancers, there's no irrefutable or reproducible evidence that this monitoring or active surveillance saves significant numbers of lives. So if active surveillance detects a new and higher grade cancer, what is the evidence that treatments are beneficial? So although active surveillance is commonly recommended for those with Gleason 6 disease or those with low risk 3 plus 4 prostate cancer, on the pretext that any upgrading or progression can be picked up early enough so it can be treated, there's no scientific evidence at 15 years that treatments save significant numbers of lives. In fact, no treatment, surgery, and radiation all had similar survival rates. On the other hand, no treatment was without any of the complications that are commonly associated with prostate cancer treatments. So let's recap. In this video, are all prostate cancers real? You learned that the Gleason 6 is a fake cancer, that active surveillance is commonly recommended for low-risk disease, and that there's no scientific evidence that active surveillance saves significant numbers of lives. To learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care, and digital health, check out these other videos.